Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Mark Penn, former pollster and advisor to President Clinton and also Hillary Clinton, chairman of the Harris Poll and CEO of Stagwell Inc. Mark, good to see you. Thank you. Glad to see you. Let's start with the poll, the both the Harvard Harris poll and what you've been seeing with regard to the Israel Hamas war and American support. One of the things you've uh, talked about recently is the generational divide. What are you seeing? Sure. I think over at the Harris poll, we're seeing a lot of strong overall support for Israel in the polling, uh, really along the dimensions of 80 to 90 percent who recognize, you know, that Israel has a justified right to defend itself given what happened. Uh, what's really interesting to me is that 15 to 17 percent uh, that said they side with Hamas in a lot of the in a lot of the questions, and it's it's primarily people, you know, aged 18 to 24, where this issue is is almost a 50-50 issue, you know, compared to people who are over 65, where it was a 95 to 5 issue, uh, and interesting to see also the level of information that they have what they thought was the case you know did those people think that, that israel bombed the hospital they did do they think that the atrocities happened at all there's about 17 percent who say it didn't happen at all or or deny that it happened a lot of people who they 17 percent don't believe the attack ever took place correct yes Wow. Well, that's that's like people who can't locate canned on a map almost. So I'm I don't know what to make of that. But let me before we delve into the generation, which I think is fascinating, we're seeing play out in the campuses and elsewhere. Let's start with the, the dichotomy between Israel and Hamas. I mean, um, Hamas, is, it's been designated as a terrorist group. It's clearly a terrorist group. Um, is that do you think people are conflating Hamas with Palestinians? Because I would I would think that there, anyone who's expressing support for Hamas must be thinking of them as a surrogate for the people of Gaza. Is that right? Well, uh, that's a question I can't I can't really answer that question, right? I, I think that that Israel is fighting against Hamas. Of course, there's support more support for Palestinians and for Palestinian cause uh, than than there is for Hamas. Whether or not they're being conflated by whom. I, I couldn't fully answer, you know, the, the question in terms of what you see going on in the college campuses. There seems to be a lot of conflation, you know, occurring because a lot of people who are out there demonstrating don't really support, you know, what, what Hamas's objectives are, right? So then when we go back, ultimately, I think one of the most important questions in the poll is, what do you, how do you think this whole thing should be resolved And 63%? say two-state solution and again there's about 15 percent that say wipe out israel and then the, the rest say well arab countries should absorb the palestinians so so that's kind of the range and so there is about 15 percent hardcore of support for uh you know the destruction of israel but that puts 85 percent or so of the of the overall population on the other side of the fence to one degree or another right who who think that yeah you know a two-state solution we think the problem has to be solved in other questions there's more of a 60 40 between palestinian issues and sympathy and sympathies with with some of the israel positions so yes there is public opinion is more nuanced but but we focused in the poll very much on israel versus hamas because that's what the war is and uh if you support hamas then, then that puts you in a, in a, in I think, a different category. And there's about 15 percent to do. You know, one of the challenges, of course, is the role Hamas plays in Gaza, and extricating Hamas from Gaza is no easy task. When you do, you delve deeper into that in terms of what's the outcome. What are the? I mean, you mentioned two state. So, I mean, some of these things sound so easy on paper, and it's almost existential, like um, they've been debated for years. I mean, what? We're in a ground war now. Um, what is the end game? Have you asked people about that to some extent? Well, look, I, I, I think people see Israel as justified in defending itself. And so the end game for Israel is creating a secure Israel. 
The end game for Palestinians is quite different. Is the end game for Palestinians the destruction of Israel, or is it some kind of resolution or settlement or different government? Right? Yeah. And I think that that's that's what's you know that's what's in play here because there hasn't been a lot of movement over the years. A lot of people thought that the deal with the Saudis would also produce movement, you know, for the Palestinians. Uh, and we don't know what might have come out of that negotiation because it's been, at least for now, short-circuited by the conflict, yeah. by the conflict itself. But uh, we focus so far. Look, we'll have a lot of months in which to kind of go through. I think the the nuances of of you know how this should be settled and the concern that there is uh, that that there is for civilians on both sides. Uh, but the immediate reaction of the American public was was very similar to what uh, President uh, Biden put out. Uh, he actually got a 58% approval on his Israel position, which is a higher approval than he's gotten on anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot is trying to be be made of some poll that shows some minor change in, you know, his Democratic support. But but he, he impressed a lot of people that he's he can be president, that he can handle complex, you know, foreign affairs uh, so far more so than anything else he's done in his presidency, which I found really quite interesting. Well, I do want to get into what's happening, Biden, but let's focus on the poll a second here, because I think what's interesting, is there a disconnect in your mind between the findings of the poll and the narrative that we're seeing play out? Because certainly there have been protests, you know, there's been a documented rise in anti-Semitism and just sort of hate speech in general. Um, That how does that correlate with 90 to 95 percent of Americans supporting Israel and supporting the U.S. stance on Israel in this case? I think that you I think the poll pretty much explains what we're saying, right? If it's if it's, you know, around 84, 85 percent to 15, there would be more people with sympathetic for Palestinians over Hamas. But it's really about the young people who are in an information envelope of their own. We don't have, they, they really don't even have the experience of 9-11. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't really go back to the, the history of the formation of Israel. They don't, they don't really have the experience of the 73 war, which obviously touched President Biden. When he saw, they live in a very different information envelope. And those people who've been fueled by social media are most likely really to, to be supportive you know, uh, you know, against Israel, and we are seeing. So when I look at the poll, I say, well, how is it possible that we've got a, a policy here? It's got broad support, but when it's only got 50% of young people, uh, then you can really see what the disconnect. You can see why you have the demonstrations. That's who's going to show up at demonstrations. It has the time, you know, at which to show up at demonstrations, and and so you know, a lot of the questions. Look, these people who are over 65. They were uh, demonstrating college students back in their day. Yeah, uh, and we'll, probably we'll, on about this. I mean, you didn't have maybe you always had the same disinformation loop, but it does seem to be perhaps more exaggerated now with regard to the dichotomy and views between the generations. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. You know, there was a book that made a big impact on me when I was in college called Rebellion in the University, which basically traced people through the various ages and that rebellion has been has been typical at the university but you know we are seeing something very different a lot of these you you know wishy-washy statements out of university you know presidents and i think a lot of the issues coming up it shows that they know that their constituency is divided and so they're acting differently than if their constituency wasn't divided you know and they felt their constituency wasn't divided over george floyd and so they were very affirmative and out there with with their statements but their constituency is divided. And, and I think that's the, the interesting thing. I've, I've rarely seen an issue that is more generationally focused than party focused in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, although leadership um, is not about crowdsourcing, right? I mean, this is where the moral clarity argument comes in. Do you think you're seeing a stronger response? We've certainly seen pressure from donors for a stronger response from university presidents and others. Uh, I think university presidents have done what they're going to do. I think I think I think the whole controversy has kind of moved on, you know, since then. Uh, I think the question is what's going to happen. What, you know, 
you have to understand, we have a real-time conflict going on here, right? What's the president going to do? What are the adversaries going to do? How, yeah. is this gonna, how is this going to play itself out? You know, what are the opportunities to negotiate some kind of peace, a new government in Hamas? Who is going to do that leadership? Look, there are much bigger issues here. And, and you know, again, the, the overriding presence of Iran and whether or not the administration's policy towards Iran basically had to be thrown in the waste paper basket and, and started from scratch. Yeah. These, these are huge, you know, policy and global issues that don't lend themselves to the to the simplicity of, of these of these demonstrations and, and and how this plays itself out, I think will be, you know, incredibly important to the to the future of us and the rest of the world. Well, let's talk about the Biden administration. You mentioned that 58 percent support, Mark. Um, obviously, there's some trepidation as to how this war unfolds. Are you seeing any signs that that popularity may be shaky? I mean, again, it's early days yet, but. Well, that was 58 um, percent approval of his Israel policy, which, like I said, considering that so many people don't like President Biden, namely all the Republicans. Right. He generally has been getting 35 to 40 percent approval on virtually any issue. So that says there are a lot of independent voters who said, you know what, he has actually stepped out of his kind of normal partisan framework here. He's willing to even maybe take on some some opposition within the Democratic Party. That is the kind of thing that gets what the president needs. Right? Yeah. It's called swing voters. Right now in, in, in our poll, Trump is winning by four or five points. In most polls, Trump is, is, a, is ahead over Biden. And so yeah. the focus here on do all Democrats support his policy? No, all Democrats don't support his policy. Do all, does, does, does America overall support his policy? They, they do for now. This thing develops over time. You really have seen America has like a limited patience for dealing with combat and wars. Uh, and, and we will see what happens. We, we will see what happens here. But is his ability here to pick up votes Look, the, the voters who disagree with him, where he is, I don't think they're voting for Donald Trump for president. Okay. But let me, we've seen Dean Phillips come into the, you know, at least be a contender, you know, wanting for the primary to be the Democratic candidate. What do, you've got long experience in this area. What do you make of, of this, you know? Is this likely to succeed? Is he likely to succeed in some fair. respect? I mean, you know. It's, it's, is it likely to succeed? No. I mean, I think, I think the, the Biden team made a little bit of a mistake in New Hampshire. I think that then uh, Dean Phillips could pull out maybe New Hampshire uh, delegates, but I guess those delegates won't be seated. I mean, I, I don't know whether or not they're official delegates, or not official delegates. I mean, you know, Dean Phillips is as pro-Israel as Biden. So there's not an issue, you know, he's, and Biden is performing his role as president better, I think, in this issue so far than any. So he can showcase that, that, in fact, he deserves a term. If he comes out, look, this thing's just in the beginning phases. The next couple of months here and how the Biden and the Biden team react here, you know, will determine his presidency. And that's the way these presidencies go. You know, you think you it's think all Israel will determine his presidency? I mean, he's still losing to Donald Trump, you said, in terms of the actual he, he is man a man. Pardon? He is today, but but you know, these things haven't played themselves out. You know, Donald Trump has a lot of emerging weaknesses here through through all of these trials, and I don't think people expected Biden to step up uh, as much as he has here. And of course, you know, the Republican side can do a lot of partisan criticism, but as I said, as I said to you before, this is his opportunity actually to win over. A lot of swing voters, if he can be effective here in managing this crisis. And look, George Bush never expected his presidency to be about 9-11. Uh, presidencies take unexpected turns and they test the leadership here, you know, in unexpected ways. If the election was on economy and immigration, Joe Biden was having a tough time winning that. Mm -hmm. If you pull out here, you know, a thing, a thing here where, where Hamas no longer rules Gaza, but the, the but the con but the conflict doesn't become a regional war successfully contains Iran. He has a number of challenges ahead of him here, 
to thread this needle. If he does it, it will be a lot more than anybody expected he could do. Although the Republicans have an equally strong stance pro-Israel, do they not? So it's almost net, feels a little net neutral that any president we'd put in office in the next round would would take the same stance. Uh, it's is fair, that to, fair say to say the Republicans have a similar stance, but, but the point is that the president has the, the leadership element here within the world, and either he can handle that leadership element successfully or not. And if he does, that's going to be that's going to add a number of points to his bottom line. Now, secondarily, that you'll say, well, maybe people generally they're going to vote on the economy and immigration and 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 these other issues, and and maybe they're just going to come back to the come back to those issues. But this is a whole dimension to the presidency that, that did not exist. Some would say it's his fault for the policy in Iran, but nevertheless, how he handles the next two months is going to determine his role in the history books too. So. I do want to ask about these other players coming in. I'm not going to get into the GOP slate. We'll leave that for another day. But we've seen, of course, um, so Dean Phillips, let's just get him out of the way. Is he going to have any impact at all other than perhaps damaging his future career? Maybe he's not even doing that. I don't know. Everybody knows who he is now, so I suppose it's helpful. That, that's true. I suppose all publicity is good publicity in that case. Then let's move to RFK Jr., who you know does seem to be at least garnering support? Is that mostly I, support I from Democrats? Of, of, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that either. The person to spend time on now is Nikki Haley. Okay? Right. Nikki Haley is going to pull off uh, what people think can't be pulled off, or she's not, right? Ron DeSantis didn't make it. Uh, his campaign has continued to deflate. Uh, she's now tied with him even in Iowa. She does even that finish in Iowa and then goes into New Hampshire and does, you know, maybe doubles her vote in New Hampshire. She doesn't have to win. She could flip the whole race like in in weeks. Uh, and, and that's pretty much how presidential politics does play. So itself. so it's she's a possible contender. And is there any world in which um, there's a Haley v. I've said Newsom before or who else could pass? Is it do you think Biden is pretty much going to get to the finish line and be our contender? from what you see and deduce at this point? Yes, I think Biden is going to be, he's not going to be knocked off by RFK Jr. who had to leave the primary uh, or by, by a congressman, that, that's not happening. Unless, unless, unless the, the war takes a, a turn, I don't, I don't see him you know, doing a Lyndon Johnson, I have to take, you know, I don't see that happening. I think he is going to continue to move ahead. And the real question now you have to look at is, is the Republican primary going to play itself out uh, as as uh, as expected and Donald Trump get the nomination despite all of these indictments and issues and problems and his his frankly his his lack of performance you know when when Israel came and you know, it seemed an inability to get you know back on the international stage and what should have been a layup for him yeah uh, and 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 Nikki Haley really showing momentum she has the one thing that you always look for in presidential candidates in primaries, momentum. Yeah. Um, so let me ask what's on your radar, especially with regard to this, um, this generational divide we started talking about at the beginning of this interview. Does that, is that something that you think will be reflected in voting patterns? Is it anything that you think we should be aware of in other areas? I mean, it's playing out now, but there's an emotion of the moment, obviously, and it could dissipate. Well, I mean, look, the, the younger voters have been voting Democratic for a long time. I mean, they're, 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 they've been very uh, strongly Democratic. I don't really, I don't, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Look, I, I think the country is coming to some realizations you know, about, you know, what's happening with inflation and the economy, what's happening with crime and some of the things that they, they didn't believe could happen. You know, the immigration issue had been something that had been confined to the Democratic Party and now had, I think, Democrats is when when migrants made it to uh, Democratic cities and had to, that had to be funded, suddenly that issue kind of became almost a bipartisan issue. Mm -hmm. And then you've seen kind of the, you know, what's, what's emerged on the, on the world stage. 
And, you know, will this be all about, you know, Israel and the Palestinians, or will this really come down to the United States versus Iran? And, and I think that's going to play itself out, because isn't that really the underlying conflict here? Uh, and, that's and, a scary thought. You know, and, and, how, and how a presidency, well, I think that's really the issue. Are Americans scared of Iran? Right? Have they let Iran get so big now that, that, that Iran can threaten the United States? Or is it the other way around? Are, 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 are those in Iran sitting there, right, daring the United States, but knowing that they could be wiped out in a matter of days, we moved a significant military force there? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that it, it, it'll be, you know, this is the issue that's really going to play itself, play itself out, you know, in these couple of, of critical months. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, Diane.